Hi everybody, Lisa Orr here, and I'm gonna tell you some things about my process and uh, make a couple of pots for you. So, uh, let's see, I'm gonna start with, well, what I will be making today is a flower brick candlestick uh, item, and I will be making a butter dish in a bisque mold. And I want to start off by talking about bisque molds in general. Okay, uh, I actually add a lot of decorations that are textured onto my pottery pieces, and I don't hand carve every single bit of clay. I hand carve it one time and make a mold of it. So here is an example of some of my hand carving. Okay, so here's some textures that I made uh, out of this material, plastilina or plasticine. All right, they have it in armadillo. Um, there's different colors of it. That particular readable one in my studio is white, but there's different colors. There's gray. They're all the same. All right, and I put it on some sort of non-studio, non-dusty board and uh, keep that dust free so that the plasticine will adhere. Oh, I was gonna show you how I make a bisque mold. So let's see, let me get this. So what I'll do is I will get a little piece of clay and um, you can see it has this white dust around it. That's a little bit of cornstarch. So I will get a piece of clay, flatten it out. I'm gonna do this one here, I'm gonna make a mold. So I have, so this is a little bit of cornstarch that would be, it's left from molding that. I'm gonna stick that on there and really get into the texture there, peel it off. And then there's this. This is white earthenware clay, any clay will do. And then I like to get another tool and kind of add some additional decoration, making each one of these molds unique. Now for it to work properly as a mold, you have to have it be really porous. To be really porous, you have to fire it low, like 08 or something like that. So I fire my molds at 08. So that is how that is made. All right, so similarly, I form things in molds, such as butter dishes. This butter dish isn't the same size. This is for Kerrygold butter, yum. All right, uh, but um, I am going to do a quick demonstration of a butter dish in a mold. Okay, so this looks like plaster, but it's the fired clay, fired to 08. Okay, you can see I formed this mold just by cut it, by really crudely kind of uh, cutting it with a um, putty knife kind of cutting in like that and then scraping you know do using a trimming tool there and then firing it to 08 if it you can see it's broken a couple of times I just epoxied it back together okay so here's my clay sorry trying to respect your time my clay. So this gray clay is white earthenware. It's low fire white. It's gray because it's about 50% talc, uh, which in Texas, where it's mined, our talc that uh, is, is gray because it's got some organic matter blended in with it the way it occurs in nature. Okay, so I'm going to need a rolling pin. So basically, I am rolling my slabs because I want a really pretty raw edge, kind of like live edge in wood or something like that. So I am going to roll the middle of my piece. I'm gonna be real careful not to ruin this part here. I, in fact, I want it to kind of grow or kind of like rise, like if you were making shortbread, that beautiful edge when it starts to really to flake and look good. Okay, so I'm only rolling the middle. Now, 
since I don't care, I only care about the edge, I am going to, that's the part I'm gonna use. And the middle part's gonna be all um, uh, mushed together to make one piece. But here I go. So I'm gonna find some part of this that looks good like that. See, I really like when it does like elephant skin kind of wrinkles and stuff, stretch marks. This is when stretch marks are great. It's the kind of stretch marks you want. Okay. So I'm going around like that. I'm almost there. Got to find some more edge that looks good. Okay. Found some. Now the trick is, is to really weld this together so it doesn't fall apart on these messy seams in here. Oh, I already had a piece. Okay, so here's this. It's kind of messy, uh, but it, uh, but what I do is come, come back. Don't put, I don't mess with the edge. I don't muss and fuss and smooth the edge. You could on your butter dish, but if you're interested in my butter dish, that is what I'm doing, is I'm trying to leave that beautiful uh, clay expression for you to admire if you have one of these. Okay. I kinda like it to look like the top of the Alamo almost. All right, so there's that. Um, now I've got a credit card tool that I have cut uh, with like a little notch down here that you can see kind of and um, a curve here and th those are the parts that we need so let me show you what we're doing with that um, first of all I'm just gonna smooth out the bottom where the butter sits so if you're gonna do a clay mold you do need to consider um, like shrinkage so if your clay shrinks around 10% uh, you've got to make it larger 10% this needs to be 10% so you still have a stick of butter calculate 10% larger for just the clay this this clay thing that's being formed around it and 10% larger again for the mold all right oops Oh, well, first I'm gonna go around and do the edge. So I'm gonna, I like to give it like a little frame and emphasize the shape of it by adding a bead going around here. Okay. And then, I'm just gonna smooth it a little bit more. Believe it or not, I am gonna finish this butter dish right now. Okay, um, and now I'm gonna make a frame in the bottom. I'm just gonna make a beautiful uh, frame for this butter all around. Really celebrating the butter moment. Okay, so I have everything except a gallery. Here comes the gallery. So this is where the lid will sit inside there. While I would have been doing this, my assistant would usually load the lid. I'll go ahead and do that. Anyway, here's this. And that's ready to come out of there right away. And I can usually reuse this mold. See, it got a little bit soggy. I can reuse it around six times. 
before it gets too soggy to use. Now I'm gonna put a little bit of underglaze on here. Okay, because right now is my chance. Yeah, I probably shouldn't hold it in my hand like this, but I don't know, it's what I do. So I, I basically figured out this technique by looking at um, Mold Made Pottery of Western Mexico. They have the pottery wheel over there, but it's not super common. Um, mostly people make things in bisque or sometimes plaster molds. Um, so just depends. The plaster molds give them a little bit more uniformity. Some people like that better. I personally like the clay. Okay, so there's that. All right, so we need a top. Here comes a top. So I still have some edge left. Okay, in front of part that looks like it wants to turn a corner. If you all sew, you can see me removing darts before I stitch it all together down here. Okay. Let's see, is that a good, is that good edge? It'll do the trick. It'll do the job for today. Okay, so my work is fired in an electric kiln. I bisque to cone 04. Sorry, what, I just, that's not true. I bisque to 01. I bisque to cone 01 and I glaze to cone 04. And my molds are fired to 08. All right, so this, again, kind of looks like a mess, but. It will, if you weld your clay together down there, it will hold together. I've got a thin spot right there, I'm just gonna patch it in. I probably work sloppier than anybody I've ever seen in Mexico. Um, you who use this, this technique or similar. But I don't mind. Okay. Oh, it's a little low want my edge to be even. One side of the mold is a little higher than the other. Okay, so I'm gonna flatten that out. Flatten that. Do this. Again, I'm gonna make a nice, make a nice distinction between the bottom and side. Really clarify the form. So the side's gonna be nice and smooth. All right. And these have no bottom, so it's easy to push these out. And again, a little bit of underglaze. It's just gonna be like watercolor colors, like sunset colors underneath the glaze. Okay, so then that is going to set up a little bit. Oh, I forgot to decorate it. All right, here we go. Gonna decorate it for ya. So this is slip trailing. So I like to draw a creature that is a running animal. It's an homage to the Mexican deer. Can you tell I love Mexican pottery? That's what I get for growing up in San Antonio and being surrounded by it. My mom bought a tree of life anytime anybody needed uh, had a birthday. 
That was her go-to gift because they're so exuberant and beautiful. Okay, so I have slip trailed. There's a running animal and some random other stuff. And now it's time for sprigs. So how this works is these sprigs, these bisque little pieces, I fired these. Again, here's your quiz. What, what temperature did I fire them to? And you're supposed to say 08. All right, so I'm smearing them into these molds that are fired to 08. And, um, and I would have a whole table full of these. And in about two minutes, they are ready to come out. So, do you see that? Alrighty. So there's a couple of like, just general sort of floral motifs right there. Sometimes I don't precisely form any specific uh, flower. I'll just do like just the flower, whatever flower it is I happen to happen to make is fine. I do have different colors of underglazed slip. Oops. Ah, here is how here's how one of these gets started. So the slip recipe is um, deflocculated, colored exactly the same clay body as this. So. That is what, and I put it in baggies, and it keeps a very long time, usually. Let's see. There's another deer. I really like them. They are simply representatives of the animal kingdom. And they're fun to make, they're hard to make, but they're really fun. Okay, these are grapes. I'm just gonna put them right there on that running guy that I drew and um, give him an eye, give him or her an eye. Uh, one, uh, one important thing that you do need to do is uh, there's going to be some excess water from your hand when you uh, dip these, dip the sprigs in water and then attach them. So sop that up, as my dad would have said. Okay. Here's one I made a few, uh, a couple of hours ago. Now... We're gonna put it together. Okay, that wants to come apart, but I am going to make it stay. Okay, so this goes here. Watch this. So I'm gonna decorate this la later, but I need to decorate this. I actually, when my clay gets little cracks and holes and stuff like that, I kind of love it because I glaze over it and it makes like a blue turquoise stained glass window. So um, that makes me happy and I'm just gonna keep doing it. Okay, so now here that is, that's purple trailing slip on the bottom, and um, I need a couple of sprigs. Let's see, do I have any in there? Not really, but I have some over here that I made already. So we'll get a couple of flowers and stick them on there. All right, 
So that's going to be, put a few more on there, but uh, I can do that in a bit. And um, again, sop up that extra water because it will recycle your pot right there. Now, there's one that's already dried because I did it a few hours ago. So now, are you ready for the knob? Okay, so there's that. All right, so here we have the inside, the outside, um, and the knob. Okay, so if you know me by now, I have a mold for that, and this is a three-piece mold, and it's held together with a rubber band. Okay. Um, so, this, um, well, let's see, I'll make it right there for you, so you can see it. All right, so I made this, can you tell with my finger, just to make this sort of crude, crude but functional and uh, playful flower motif. Okay, so I'm cramming some clay into that. This, oh, I like this side. This goes on there like that, pushing down, and then down right there. All right. And now this releases, et voila. Okay, and now, I need to cut this off. I need my cutter. Cut that off right there, make it level. I'm gonna fan it out a little bit like the bottom of a tree so there's some room to sit. And I also leave some space for the, I like a really wide knob so that the hand can really grab it and securely. Cause if you're touching butter, your hands might be a little, little greasy or something, so. So a little bit there, a little bit there. Stick that on, get the air out. And then, of course you know what's gonna happen next. I'm gonna make this look a little more florally. All right, it is time to decorate it, last thing. And first of all, I'm gonna spray it. I have a little bit of, uh, it's, um, I believe it's calcium chloride in my, in the water, it's damp rid, whatever damp rid is. It's that chemical, it's, um, it's not a dangerous chemical, it's like a safe, they use it for safe driveway melt and it makes the clay adhere to itself better. So let's see. And I really love when the um, when the slip gets very, very expressive and gets lots of ruffles and lines and things like that. And so, these sprigs are saved in a Tupperware with um, plaster. Just do some plaster in one of those. And, uh, and keep it damp and they will keep these, your sprigs uh, fresh and ready to go for ages, ages and ages. Okay, so we're getting extra clay off a little bit. There we are. Um, and I'm gonna put some running deer on there and then some flowers. To peel off the extra clay, that thin clay, that thin little bit. Mm, where does it want to go? Right there. So there's those running. Maybe a flower right there. So this is still my original work. It's just I am able to um, use it to multiply uh, my, my effort, my aesthetic. 
And um, anyway, that is going to do it. I think what I'm going to do next is put a little piece of clay because the knob wants to be heavy. A little piece of clay in there to kind of push that back up, push it back down. I'm going to straighten it all out. Stay together. Anyway, this was my best effort at um, butter dish. No! These are the kind of cracks that are fun, though, when they get uh, glaze in them and they make a stained glass window. All right. Maybe I'll just do one more flower right there. Beautiful. Perfect. All right. It took 26 minutes for a butter dish. Um, I guess I don't have time for this, but I'll just tell you this is going to stick on there. And then I'm gonna put a little, this is the candle, candlestick part. It has a little nichrome wire spike in it that I'm gonna stick in there from nichrome wire that you get at Armadillo. You can just stick that in right now. And then the rest of it will get attached and decorated. You know how I decorate already. And then this will get flipped over and um, decorated with sprigs and cut out so that it will hold flowers beautifully. All right, and that is my flower brick candlestick. And um, I hope you enjoyed this demo. It was fun to do and um, Email me with any questions, lisa at lisaor.com. All right, thanks.